We're about to dive into the newest lore available regarding the most recent Tyranid incursion into the Milky Way galaxy. Spoiler warning, these events are extracted from the new Black Library novel, Leviathan. Throughout the lead up to 10th edition, and within the most recent lore from Black Library, we have seen the Imperium beset on all sides by the Alien and the Heretic. A new threat has emerged within the Galactic West from Segmentum Pacificus, a Xenos horde so numerous that the threat it poses to even the safety of the Emperor himself vies for Gilliman's attention from the myriad tasks which he must oversee. What has become clear during the defence of the world of Regium is that Highfleet Leviathan may well be aiming to topple the Imperium's leadership, to lay bare humanity's defences and open the way for mass consumption of the Imperium. That, and there may be far more drive and self-awareness possessed by the Tyranid race than anybody had thought possible. There is but one obstacle which lays between the hordes of High Fleet Leviathan in Segmentum Pacificus and Terra within Segmentum Solar. This is the Sanctus Line, a selection of fortified worlds within Segmentum Pacificus which are responsible for maintaining the war effort such as by producing fuel, armaments and ammunition but which also serve the purpose of being supremely defensible should the Tyranid menace pierce the outer defences and attempt to break through the Sanctus into Segmentum Solar. Dotted with indomitable fortresses and defended by the Imperium's greatest heroes, there is little which can breach these master works of man, though we will discuss that momentarily. To aid in defending the worlds of the Sanctus line and where possible push back against the foe, Vaunted Custodes and Ultramarine Veterans have been assembled into strike forces called Soulblade Fleets. This defence must succeed, for if the Tyranids break through, only Calamity can prevail. It is a known fact that should the Sanctus Line be breached, Robute Gilliman would be required to redeploy forces currently engaged in dozens of war zones against the ruinous powers in an attempt to stem the Tyranid advance towards Terra, inevitably leading to the forces of Chaos reclaiming much Imperial territory elsewhere in the galaxy. A sour prospect indeed. Throughout the defence of the planet Regium, one of the worlds within the Sanctus Line, the Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan displayed tactical nuance and telepathic traits utilised as a form of psychological warfare never before seen. Even when facing the dauntless Imperial defenders, Ultramarines comprised of the 1st, 6th and 8th companies, and Cadians of the famed 401st, the Space Marine leadership would be drawn into the open and eliminated piecemeal with a kind of contempt that many believe the Tyranids incapable of. In the opening stage of the War of Regium, Ultramarine Lieutenant Castamon, responsible for Regium as well as the surrounding system's defence, would dispatch the mainstay of his forces to combat a splinter fleet of Leviathan he believed on course for a world of significant population close by. In countless scenarios since first contact with the Tyranid race centuries prior, their established predatory behaviour would dictate they move directly for the planet which contained the most biomass. Only it would be discovered that was not the purpose this biofleet served. The Ultramarine Navy would be ambushed by a much larger Leviathan fleet, proving the smaller fleet detected earlier was but a lure. Try as they may, once Tyranid organisms managed to board the Ultramarine vessels, they made short work of the defenders on board. A new Tyranid Norn emissary, known as the Harbinger, even defeating Lieutenant Tyrus in personal combat. What is curious during this conflict is that this creature, when looking upon Tyrus, displayed a certain enmity towards him, rather than the impassive kill or be killed directive normally associated with Tyranid bioforms. Though the majority of the space marines within that section of the Sanctus line would be killed during the disastrous Void conflict, two would survive to take word back to Lieutenant Castamon at Regium, one being a new Primaris role within the space marine chapters, an apothecary Biologus. Before fleeing during the onboard melee, the apothecary in question, named Voltus, would seize a parasitic specimen he removed from a neurogaunt, surmising that these parasites were capable of distorting radio signals, summoning other Tyranids for aid, and perhaps secreting pheromones into the air, which send mortals nearby into a violent, psychotic frenzy. The game was set, 
and the Ultramarines had not only revealed their hand, but had lost the vast majority of their assets capable of defending the Sanctus Line. As the innumerable horde of Tyranids, in itself but a tendril of the mainstay of the greater consciousness that is Leviathan, now advanced towards Regium unhindered, a great many nightmares were experienced by not only the citizens of that world, but also its transhuman defenders. A reoccurring vision of a truly massive Tyranid, sporting scything limbs and horns sprouting from its head was experienced by many, along with the name Harbinger. The Great Devourer would even reach out to minds nobody would ever think to suspect, likely thanks to the efforts of the new Tyranid psychic organism, the Neurotyrant. In one such instance, a lone servitor, naught but a levitating skull, would find its memories reawakened by the Great Devourer, even experiencing the great deathless hunger of its newfound friend. In this newly self-aware, confused state, the lobotomized cyborg tries to help by breaking down the city of Port Jura into more manageable, bite-sized pieces by accessing the generators underground and causing a massive explosion which levels the entire city. The servitor's new friend would be pleased, the town and its populace much more digestible in this new form. With the limitless hordes of Leviathan bearing down on the planet of Regium, one of the largest manufacturers of munitions for the Sanctus Line war effort, there would prove further foes still, hindering the successful defence of the planet. From ancient caverns which date back to the planet's colonising fleet, concerted groups of abhuman Xenos cultists would make use of these, emerging to rake through the remains of Port Jura for survivors, executing any they found, or to hinder the defence of fortresses who were doing their best to hold out against the Xenos hordes. The unified gene stealer cults made their presence felt. What was curious though, is that by looking upon their wall carvings which told of the impending Tyranid invasion, in their mind the coming of their god, this cult was at least hundreds of years old, allowed to fester within Regium's superstitious populace, turning citizenry, engineers and even PDF forces against the Imperium's light. This may well display intent by High Fleet Leviathan centuries prior to emerging onto the galactic plane from the west possibly even to make a beeline for Terra. I do wonder if this is associated with the Gene Stealer cults on Terra, a clear, paved way for a main Tyranid thrust. As the constant thump of Tyranid biopods could be heard thundering down from the atmosphere into Regium, and the leathery wings of airborne gaunts provided a constant reminder of what lurked in the dark night sky, Regium indeed seemed lost. Even the pure, fiery mind of the senior Minotaurum Confessor could not prove defence enough against the telepathic predations of the Tyranid Neurotyrant. Spurred on by what he believed to be Emperor-gifted visions of his own martyrdom, the Confessor would stir the massive force of Cadian 401st to leave their defensible fortress and take the fight to the enemy. He would see a prophetic vision of himself leading the Cadian regiment against the Tyranids funneling the foul Xenos through a narrow corridor of cliffs, his death providing the battle force a want for fiery vengeance which would spur them into victory against the vast Xenos horde, whilst his soul would be freed from his mortal form to join the Emperor in the afterlife. This selfish want for martyrdom would lead dozens of tanks and hundreds of Cadian defenders to painful deaths as it was revealed on the field of battle that the golden figure of the Emperor was in fact a massive, floating ball of flesh and tentacles, a psychic predator not yet defined which had been influencing thousands of Regium's populace. The Confessor died alone, a coward, running for his life. Voltus, the escaped apothecary biologist from the initial fleet destruction, would also experience visions of his Primarch Gilliman being stalked by the Harbinger, a fear stemmed from helplessness worming its way into his core. He would see in his mind's eye, Rabute hunched over a desk in his study, all by himself, the Norn Emissary stealthily lurking towards the Primarch. Through the tumult of violence and desperation, the Tyranid known as the Harbinger, the massive bioform which had slain Lieutenant Tyrus in the Void, had made planetfall, attempting to lure out and trap 
the escaped apothecary biologist Voltus, but failing. Voltus had managed to acquire a second parasite from a Neurogaunt in battle, and between he and Castamon, they planned to use the creature's psychic links to the Greater Swarm to confuse the Tyranid hordes, confusing the smaller creatures and robbing them of their numerical advantage. Now with both Voltus and the primary lieutenant Castamon within the same fortress trapped, the Harbinger would again bear down on Regium's only hope for salvation. With a numberless swarm of Tyranid bioforms, including numerous titan-sized creatures, only moments from overrunning the last bastion of defence upon Regium's main continent, it was determined that the only way to neutralise the Tyranid threat would be to destroy the planet itself. And so, in an epic battle for survival, with three space marines, including the Lieutenant and Apothecary, battle to the world's core, intent on sending their fortress shield generator to the cavernous depths of the planet, detonating the world core. Though they'd be successful, there would be a gaping hole in the Sanctus line. The only Ultramarine survivors were the Lieutenant Castamon and Apothecary Voltus. This would inevitably create a substantial gap in the defence of the Sanctus line. However, in what will hopefully be an ongoing story arc, Voltus is determined to discover a way to use his captured specimens to disrupt Tyranid's psychic communications. So it is we have learnt the Imperium's defence against the largest Tyranid swarm ever encountered has breached their defence. By Lieutenant Castamon's own admission during the novel, this means Leviathan now has a clear path to Segmentum Solar, the home of Terra itself. Will we see Gilliman now react to this threat personally, travelling to Terra himself, or perhaps even the Lion? We know Lord Solar Leontus has been leading expeditions into Segmentum Pacificus also, making aggressive forays out of Segmentum Solar, the traditional area of operation for the incumbent of the Lord Solar role. With so many senior Imperial commanders present, and the new Tyranid bioforms exhibiting the behaviour of targeting enemy leadership, will this pose danger to named characters in the setting? I hope so, and will this be across various high fleets? Or will it be more so a High Fleet Leviathan trait? Another welcome addition to Tyranid lore, in my opinion anyway, though I know everyone won't feel the same, was the partial removal of the single-minded alien swarm, where all individuals are treated as drones directed by a unified will. As we see with the Norn Emissary, the Harbinger, some of the more alpha beasts appear to feel emotions towards their prey, looking upon the enemy, even capable space marines, with disdain. It would be great if the Tyranids on the tabletop inherited their own named character in the form of the Harbinger, like they did the Red Terror or Old One-Eye in years past, but time will tell whether that occurs. Truly, this newest novel raises far more questions than it does answers, but it is a definite welcome addition to Tyranid lore, and it's great a Xenos faction has been given a bit more time and care to have its lore bolstered. Before we finish up, I want to make a statement that this video is by no means a recap of the audiobook Leviathan. Personally, I wanted to make content that highlighted some of the new lore within the audiobook in an entertaining way, without retelling the whole story. If you're interested in Tyranid stories, I do recommend it, there is plenty more besides the content of this video. If you're hard up for audible credits though, in my opinion, there are more entertaining stories out there. So I wouldn't prioritise it if you aren't necessarily a Tyranid or Space Marine enthusiast. If you enjoy the grim dark aspect of the lore, heads up, I think you'll enjoy next week's video. If you learnt something new or enjoyed the content, please leave a like, share, comment and even a subscribe, they really do wonders to share the video and help it to gain traction with the algorithm, which we really do appreciate. Thanks guys, see you next week, take it easy, and have a good one.